Good evening. It's Aaron with Bowtie Treasures. Happy Friday night. I'm a content creator for Dixie Bell. I'm a brand ambassador for Would You Bend Moldings. I don't know if you knew that or not. I don't get to use it a lot, but tonight that's what I'm going to feature. Put the link in the description. Love for you to check those products out. Uh, some good stuff there. So definitely say hi as you pop in. So I have made several uh, console tables in the past. They're not too difficult to make, if um, but to me, I think it's a great way to kind of repurpose some wood, repurpose some legs, maybe from an old table. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll find these tables from garage sales or estate sales or thrift stores, you know, 10, $15 and the table's in rough shape, I'll save the legs. And so I usually try to figure out a creative way to uh, put these legs on. In this case, I screwed four screws through and then I patched those so you can't see the screw holes anymore. So these are nice and sturdy. They're interesting legs because if you see on camera, they're kind of flared out. So that's kind of different. And um, that's what gives these things character. So all I have to do at this point is paint the base and then I can put the, the uh, wood on top. The wood, I'll probably just do a very light stain because I'd love to see that wood come through. I really wanted to decorate this up a little bit. And I thought, what better way to do that than some wood you've been molding? And so that's what I'm going to be doing tonight. I had to get creative, though, because this is wood you bend number 1322-4. 1322-4 so when you use that link that's in my description you can go check out that number but this is this is the one that I'm using and it comes in it's a pair but you'll see one thing that's a little different in the pair in that the one in my left hand is missing the little flare and the main reason for that is because it just didn't fit the 2x4 I had thought well maybe I'll just uh, heat it up and bend everything. It just wasn't working too well. It was going to be um, one of those things where it was going to be almost impossible to get back in shape. So what I did was I heated it up and I just cut that edge off. So you can see now it fits perfectly. So that's what I want to demonstrate. I'll get this heated up, cut, and then we'll glue it on there and it'll be something like that. Of course, we're looking at the, the base of the table upside down. Um, but I think this is going to add a nice decorative feature to it and uh, upscale this. So I described it in my post. We we're basically upscaling. So this is the piece that I cut off. And I can actually repurpose this if I wanted to. Maybe not on this project. I kind of proved the concept earlier or off camera. Now we're just going to execute the other one and I'm going to demonstrate that. So this is just a heat gun. Uh, I've got this heat gun, if you're curious what it is, I have on my bowtietreasures.com website. There's a shop link, and in shop there's an Amazon link, and I have this, this heat gun in there. It's a two-step uh, heat gun, and it also comes with several attachments. This is the one that I just always leave on there, and so far it's been a pretty good um, uh, heat gun. Of course, the nice thing is, with hopefully most heat guns, you can do something like this. And I've even done it where I've heated like that. But anyways, that's a little plug for the heat gun. All I really need to do in this situation is heat up the edge that I'm going to cut off. I don't need to heat up the whole thing. So usually in this situation, I'm going to heat up a little bit of the front, a little bit of the back. You don't want to burn the wood you bend. You just need it soft enough that you can cut through it. There's really no magic way of knowing if you've done enough of this. You just kind of have to know that it's probably maybe a little experience. Maybe you would probably be doing it. But um, one way you can tell probably is if you can bend it. Like if you can start turning it. That might be enough. We'll go a little bit longer. I have my heat gun on the highest setting. This is a pretty thick mold. So it can hold handle that heat. Now I will tell you that oftentimes I usually put my wood you bend molds 
uh, on when it's not painted, but it just kind of, I kind of actually forgot, but all right. So on this one, I'm just using a retractable blade and I'm just kind of sawing through where I think I want it to cut. So that's what I'm doing right now. Let's see if I can bring you in for that. Should be able to. Of course, while I'm doing this, my, uh, the mold gets, as it starts getting cold, it's going to get harder and harder. And if you can't cut through it easily, it might be an indication that you need to heat it up some more, but I think it's doing pretty good. Let me just keep, give it a few scores. There we go. So there's our piece that we cut off. Now it's got a flat end. I'm going to go ahead and just taper that a little bit. I'm not sure if I have this knife on my Amazon shop, but check it out. I think I do. So I just kind of got it close. If you know that you're going to be sanding it a little bit, then you might as well just, it's almost like carving, right? Once you get it close, you can see that. Then just take some sandpaper. And this is the part that you can sand. This is not, the part that I'm sanding isn't going to be super seen because it's going to be underneath the edge of the, um, the wood. So it just needs to be smooth. And I'm just trying to get rid of any rough, you know, uh, geometric or hard edges. Just make it look convincing like that that was the original one. And again, I'm not trying to make a match or perfectly, but that's pretty convincing, right? So I got a little bit of a high point here. So that's the beauty of the wood you've been molding is that if you had to do some editing, you can take that off with a little bit of heat, the right kind of knife and patience, maybe some sanding. If they still won't fit, I could now come back with the heat gun and do a little bit of softening up of it. Um, but we're ready to, to um, glue these on. All right. You can see on this one, it looks like it's going a little bit over and this one pretty smooth. So if I have to, I'll just bend that down. There's no reason to keep trying to sand this when I can bend the mold just a little bit to get it where it needs to be. So I've made a little bit of a mark right here. This is my center point. So I just need to make sure that I don't go past center and I'm using my little wood uh, Lazy Susan as my base. So as long as my wood bin sits there, it should be flush against the top and remember I do need to kind of get that down. So first thing I'm gonna, I usually do is just give my wood you bend a nice little heat just so that's uh, pliable. And when I push it up against the wood, it also flattens out nice. So I'm heating the back of it. You can do the front too, but this is where, as they say, the rubber meets the road. If you're concerned, you can get like a pliers or something that can hold this if you don't want to get your hand close to the heat gun. It's perfectly fine. All right. And then you want to use the or an, a yellow wood glue. Dixie Bell has this on their website. You can also see that on my website uh, in the Amazon area. <clears throat> if you use my Amazon shop, I get a little bit of a, a commission without you having to get it pay extra. So I always appreciate any kind of support that way. If you'd like to use a Dixie Bell, if you need to play the Dixie Bell order, you can always go to my website, bowtietreasures.com and use the Dixie Bell link there. That'll give you, that'll give me a little bit of a, a kickback. And again, you don't pay extra for that. It just kind of keeps me motivated and inspired to keep bringing you content like this so i always appreciate the support all right so i'm just using my finger right now i've got a little bucket of water that i'll kind of clean my finger off with so here's the moment of truth i'm eyeballing exactly center all right so it's a little bit it's still a little soft so i'm able to push this down and what I like to do is go ahead and take the heat gun 
and give it a little bit of heat on the front. While I'm pushing it down where I can, because you want that that bolt, you want the mold to flatten out. <clears throat> it's not always flat. What I mean by that is the back of it could have a dent to it. So getting this, getting the back flat is pretty important. But this right here allows me to push it down. I'm looking for the glue to kind of seep through to the other side. Just giving a little bit of a push. I do not use any kind of tape for this. I would say if your glue's being, you're bent. If the mold's being a little ornery, then maybe I would. All right, one other thing I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna get a little bit, or get a small craft brush. And I'm going to just dip it in the water. And this is where I like to, it's probably too much water on there. I like to get rid of some of that glue that's peeking through. I don't want that in my project. So I'm just using, uh, you know, I've had some followers and friends say, uh, Q-tips are good for this. That's fine too. I'm just, again, using my bucket of water that I like to have out when I do my lives. Just be careful that you're not putting too much water that you're like, uh, it's starting to seep into your mold and causing you problems that way. But if you don't put, if you don't want so much glue seeping out, that's fine. It just helps me kind of know that I'm giving it enough pressure and that everything's going to be okay. Okay. So just make sure it's nice. Once you get that to that point, it's pretty much going to stay. It's there's everything from the glue drying to to suction, but you can get really crazy with this. Maybe the bigger the molding, the more pressure you apply. Again, it can handle it. All right. So again, we're just we're on the second one. I'm going to heat up the back. That's what I meant to do. These are really nice, big moldings. Uh, they have all kinds. But definitely, if you don't mind, check them out. Use my link that's in the description. Go see what they have. Make sure you, you look at the size of the, of the molding. It can be a little bit surprising when you expect to be getting a four inch wide mold and you get an inch and a half. And I think unless they've changed things, a lot of that's because they use like uh, European measurements. So you might be dealing with more like millimeters, centimeters. And so anyways, I, I usually have some kind of conversion calculator open when I check out. Because you might think you're getting something like this. It should be four inches and you get it and you're like, wow, how in the world? What am I going to do with a 12 inch mold? But um, anyways, they're, they're really great. Like I said, I don't get to do them a lot, but every once in a while, I just really need these wood you've been molds to do a great job of transforming. And I use the word upscale a piece. So again, I'm giving it just a little bit more heat and then I'm going to start pushing it down again. After we're done with this, ooh, that got hot, we are going to paint. So try to get everything lined up. Remember that these are, you know, these can move. So you, I try not to get too concerned that the things don't match, but if you're really moving them around, you, you might want to check to make sure you're being symmetrical. All right, so just a good push. Make sure that glue spread out. And it's going to start drying pretty quick. All right, same technique. I'm going to get some water on my brush, dab it out, get some of this glue, extra excess glue out of there. Hopefully I'm not sticking my head in the way too much. It's 
kind of weird that we're doing this upside down, but I found this is usually the best way I can I can do the uh, the tables or the bases. It just doesn't work to for me to put it on its feet to paint these just a little bit more st sturdier. Okay, so we're going farmhouse and. You know, as much as people maybe don't like farmhouse, farmhouse is, I think it's pretty awesome. It's because people love it still and it's casual. But to be honest with you, for me, farmhouse is uh, a nice look that is forgiving. So if you need something that's going to allow you to have scratches and mess ups, farmhouse styles, because it's, it's going to let you do that. So just in review, this is the Would You Been molding set 1322-4. Use the link in my description to check that out. Now, oftentimes for these farmhouse style distressed bases, I usually do a dark color like chocolate. And then when I sand, the dark color shows through. Other times I'll even let boss shine through. But when you do chocolate, that means you're going to, have to put a lot of coats of white down so you can get rid of that dark color. I'm not really that patient and that interested in going that route. So I think I'm actually going to do white with letting some of the boss through. If you're uncomfortable with that, then you know you go ahead and put a coat of gray down if you want or something like that. Um, but I think at this point, I am going to go straight into cotton or fluff. Maybe let's try fluff. It's a little less stark. All right, so I've just got fluff here and we're just going to put that right on, okay? If you want to wait a little bit, you can before you start putting paint on this, but um, I did I, I did not boss. The Woody Ben doesn't need boss. It's not going to bleed through or stain. It has no smell, so you can charge right in there. But I will tell you that oftentimes I will paint uh, I probably should have done gray because if I'm going to let the white show through a little bit, then you don't want the wood you bent to show through. So that would be a little bit of a mistake on my part if, if I wanted to have some of the original underlying color. So to pay for my mistake, if I had to, I would go back and put a coat of gray boss over this white just to kind of get me back where I want, but we'll see. We'll see about a second coat. Right now, the plan was not to. And I will tell you that if you are planning on sanding this, I don't put a second coat. And the reason being is because second coats make it harder to sand. So oftentimes, if I'm gonna do a farmhouse style, I'll do one coat, and then it's a lot easier to sand that paint off, and you get a much better distressed look with only one coat. Dixie Bell's paints very strong and durable. So you do two coats, it's really hard to sand without a machine of some kind. So um, I do want to distress this to a certain degree, but so I, I do like the only one coat when I'm distressing. But we love that character, right? We want to get it all in so there. I think we're all set. The only thing that uh, we need to do at this point is let everything dry. And then I will figure out what I'm going to do with this Would You Bend mold tomorrow. So I'll think on that a little bit. And uh, I think it should come out a lot of really fun. Well, nice quick live for us tonight. Hopefully you are prepared for a really great weekend. I know I am. It's going to be a busy one. And um, if you have any questions, definitely uh, post them here in the live. And uh, feel free to pass this on to anybody else you think it might be nice for them to see. I haven't done one of these in a long time, but uh, I always enjoy circling back around to them. Uh, usually for me, the top makes the difference. I can do whatever I want with the base, but if it's not the perfect top, which is the star of the show, it won't matter. So I'll try and uh, keep you guys posted on how that's coming along. Other than that, I think we're done. Hope you guys take care of yourself. Again, I'm Aaron with Bowtie Treasures. I'm a Dixie Bell content creator. Would you been brand ambassador? Don't forget to check out the link in the comments in the description and uh, check out what, what U-Bend has. That's always a big help.
Take care, guys. Thanks for joining me tonight, and we'll see you later. That's the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.